Galaxy Limitless. I'm an accredited travel agent and the youngest person to travel to every country. Our world is an amazing place just waiting for you to explore, and I want to help. I'm here to teach you the major things you need to know before you go. In this series, we're covering every country in order from most visited to least visited. And because nobody likes taking notes, I even have a free tip sheet in the description ready to go for you. But now, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, please put your seat back and tray table in the upright and locked position because we're taking off for the best travel tips and places of every country. We are kicking off this video in my brand new studio. I am so excited to be here because I recently moved to Miami Beach in Florida. So I've been soaking up the sunshine and a bit of the Latin culture as well. Absolutely loving it and I'm so excited about this new studio. By the way, if you've ever wanted to know where I get some of my fun travel products like this map, my luggage, everything like that, I share it constantly in my newsletter which has tons of travel hacks and tips and bucket list destinations and you can also check out the links in my description. It helps my channel out so much when you use these links. But anyway, it is now time to jump into a country that is most likely at the top of your bucket list, Turkey. Known for its mix of European and Asian elements, baklava, coffee, and shopping bazaars, last year it hosted 23 million international visitors, making it the sixth most visited country in the world. I had the trip of a lifetime in Turkey. I started in Istanbul where I met up with some friends and we went on an epic road trip across the country. From Istanbul to Antalya, from Pamukkale to Cappadocia, there are so many places to see and I could easily spend months in this country. The highlight for me was definitely Cappadocia. After seeing it so many times on Instagram, I was worried that it wouldn't live up to the hype, but wow. I was blown away not only by the landscape, but also by the culture and the locals I met along the way. One of the best hotels I've ever stayed at was here in Cappadocia and it's called Koza Cave Hotel, which is literally carved out of caves and has the perfect rooftop for breakfast below the balloons at sunrise. So when you travel here, make sure to tell Sam and his family that Lexi says hi. Now let's get back to the basics of Turkey, the land. Turkey is a huge country. It shares a border with Greece and Bulgaria in the west, Georgia, Armenia, and Azerbaijan in the northeast, Iran and Iraq in the southeast, and Syria in the south. As for the waters surrounding the country, Turkey borders the Black Sea in the north, the Mediterranean Sea in the south, the Sea of Crete in the southwest, and the Aegean Sea in the west. Turkey is unique in that it's one of the world's only transcontinental countries. This means that it's partly in Europe and it's partly in Asia, and it's separated by the Bosphorus River. When traveling in Istanbul, you can take a ferry from the more popular European side to the Asian side of the city, which is lesser known but holds amazing restaurants, shops, and more. Although Turkey is such a giant country, its terrain is mostly mountainous. The coastal area is made up of plains, while the rest of the country is quite rugged. When you're not looking at the mountains, you can expect the terrain to consist of valleys and hills. As for the most popular city, international tourists tend to visit Istanbul over the capital city of Ankara. When you're planning your trip, most international tourists fly into the Istanbul International Airport, which is an amazing airport, especially if you have lounge access. Wherever you decide to explore, you'll be able to find an international airport pretty nearby and a lot of domestic airports throughout the country, which you can always make a connection with. The people. Turkish is the number one language in Turkey and is spoken by over 90% of citizens. Within this language, there are common dialects spoken throughout the country. Outside of Turkish, people speak Kermani, I think I'm pronouncing that one right, Arabic, and Zazaki. Before you travel there, don't expect everyone to speak English. It's really only common in major cities like Istanbul and Izmir. You'll be able to find English speakers there. But it is possible to get by with only speaking English, especially in the large tourist areas. But don't expect this to be the case everywhere. The primary religion in Turkey is Islam, followed by Christianity and Judaism. The weather. Overall, Turkey's climate is relatively mild. Due to its unique and mountainous territories, the coasts are much cooler than anywhere else in the country. 
Throughout the middle of the country, you'll experience colder winters with an average temperature of about 40 degrees Fahrenheit and hotter summers with an average temperature of 80 degrees Fahrenheit. As you move more north in the country, you'll experience more humid and wet weather, while the east is made for snow lovers who enjoy a long winter. If I were planning a trip to Turkey, I would recommend visiting the southern coast to soak up the Mediterranean weather, which averages about 50 degrees during the winter and around 86 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer. When you're planning your trip, just keep in mind what the time of year can bring when it comes to weather. Now that you have an overview of what Turkey is like, let's jump into what you need to know before you go. As a traveler, you can never truly know everything before you arrive in a new place and you'll always run into surprises, so it's important to do your own research. But I at least want to get you up to speed on the most important things to know, so you have a solid foundation for your trip. Starting with visas. As a US citizen, you will need a tourist visa to enter Turkey. You should also know that to work or to study in Turkey, you will need a work permit or a student visa. For the US, this is usually done online in advance, but I've also gotten a visa on arrival at the airport in Istanbul. If you're traveling without a US passport, then please do research to make sure you have what you need before entering the country. Cultural customs. You know you've been welcomed in by a Turk when they offer you a traditional Turkish tea or coffee. If someone offers you something, it's typically expected that you accept. So if you're a tea lover, then you are going to have an incredible time exploring Turkey since tea is heavily drunk all over the country and is deeply rooted in Turkish history. I highly recommend finding a few cafes to sit back and enjoy some Turkish tea. One thing to know about the Turkish people is that they can be a little impatient from time to time, especially when it comes to their driving. So if you do decide to rent a car, then you've been warned. <laughs> I will also say that Turkey is home to many cigarette smokers. It's common for smoking to be allowed in outdoor dining areas, so keep this in mind if you are looking for places to eat. You probably can't even Google Turkey without seeing images of Nazar or the evil eye. The Turks can be a somewhat superstitious people, so they use images and wear jewelry of the evil eye to protect themselves against evil spirits. When greeting family and friends, it's common to greet each other with a kiss on each cheek. So if you make friends during your visit, then don't be surprised if they welcome you this way. Money and budget. I've put together several budgets with how much you can expect to pay per day in Turkey. These prices vary a lot, especially in big cities, top tourist destinations, and the time of year you visit. In this guide, these numbers include accommodation, food, transportation, and activities for one person. If you plan on backpacking Turkey, you can get away with a budget of roughly 25 to 40 US dollars per day. If you want a more comfortable trip but still want to be budget friendly, you can expect to pay an average of $55 to $85 a day. For a luxurious experience in Turkey, you'll be paying at least $120 per day with the sky as the limit. For currency, Turkey uses the Turkish Lira. If you travel with a major credit card like Visa and MasterCard, you can use your credit card throughout the country. In general, I don't really recommend American Express as a travel card because a lot of places will not accept them. And however, there are some businesses where major credit cards just aren't accepted in Turkey, so make sure to do your own research and bring a debit card in case you need to pull out cash during your trip. Also, side note, always make sure to let your bank know in advance that you're gonna be traveling, especially if you have a debit card, so that they know not to uh, mark the transaction as fraud and you get stuck not being able to get out any money on your trip. Once you land, you can get Lira from the airport at ATMs, exchange offices, and post offices. Before you go, make sure to download a currency converter app to use offline and check current conversion rates. This will help you know if you're getting a good deal on your new Turkish lamp from the Grand Bazaar in Istanbul. We are taking a quick break from talking about budget while traveling to thank the sponsor of this episode of the Every Country series, Masterworks. With rising inflation in Turkey and around the world, making smart investments for the future has never been more important. So if you are looking for unique ways to finance your travels, then listen up. Many travelers, including myself, know that the key is to have your money working for you, even while you're jetting around the world. 
but this year, most investment strategies have struggled to provide the results that we're used to. Luckily for us, our friends at Masterworks are giving you access to one of the few assets to increase in value in 2022, contemporary art. Exclusive million dollar paintings like Picasso, Banksy, and Basquiat without the million dollar price tag. In all of their sales thus far, Masterworks has delivered positive returns to their investors. So it's no surprise over 700,000 people have signed up. With markets still lagging, demand is growing by the week, but my subscribers can skip the line and get started today. Just click the link in my description. And now let's jump back into planning your travels in Turkey. Language. Over 90% of the country speaks the main language of Turkish, even in some of the country's largest cities like Istanbul, Ankara, and Izmir, it can be difficult to find English speakers. However, in touristy areas and at tourist attractions, you might have some more luck finding someone who knows English. In essence, you don't need to know how to speak Turkish to visit Turkey during your visit, but it's always a helpful sign of respect to learn a few basic phrases. Hello, marhaba. Where is the bathroom? Banyo nerede. I already gotta say, I don't speak very good Turkish, but I'm trying my best here. Thank you, teşekkürler. And goodbye, güle güle. Water. Across Turkey, water is safe to drink. However, always check with locals first as sometimes the water in certain areas doesn't taste great. So to avoid this, many locals recommend sticking to bottled water during your trip. Cell phone and internet. When it's time to plan the cell phone and internet part of your trip, I recommend you start by checking with your own local phone carrier for an international travel package. I personally use T-Mobile. Another option is to purchase a Turkish SIM which allows you to use local cellular data while on your trip. Some of the biggest Turkish carriers are Turkcell and Vodafone. As for coverage, you can expect 4G in larger cities with a drop off to almost no service in some rural areas, especially the mountainous ones. If you don't plan to make international calls, you can get away with just Wi-Fi from local cafes, hotels, and public areas. Transportation. During your visit to Turkey, you won't have a problem relying on public transportation to get around. For example, buses connect many cities throughout the country and are generally offer a pretty comfortable experience. As for trains, there are a variety of routes and types of trains, especially within the eastern part of the country. If you are traveling long distances throughout Turkey, I recommend you opt for the high-speed trains. As for driving, it may be best for you to skip renting a car, but that depends on what destinations you would like to visit. Also keep in mind there's quite a few uh, domestic flights that take you to most places that you are probably looking at going. I personally rented a car and didn't have too much trouble with it, but it did get pretty stressful, especially in Antalya. To sum up my experiences on that trip, Turkish driving is erratic and at times can be dangerous. To avoid the stress of driving but still get around by car, you can opt for a taxi service which is available within each city and town called Dolmas. Ride-sharing apps like Uber and other Turkish ride-share apps are available in large cities. Outlets and converters. In Turkey, you'll use type F sockets. Turkey also has an average of 220 volts of power, so make sure your devices can handle that voltage before plugging in. If you're traveling from the US, you'll need a voltage converter to keep your device's battery life healthy while you're visiting. I also always suggest bringing along a universal adapter which adjusts to the outlets wherever you're visiting. Safety. As with any destination, common sense is essential. If you're traveling alone, be sure to share your itinerary with your loved ones and know where to find your embassy. For US citizens, you can find the embassy in Istanbul. As one of the most popular countries to visit in the world, Turkey relies heavily on tourism. Currently, it is safe to travel to Turkey. However, it is advised to exercise caution if you want to travel to areas close to the southern Syrian and Iraq border due to heightened safety threats. At this time, it is also not safe to travel to the city of Cernak and the province of Hakkari. In heavily populated cities and tourist locations, tourists are often the victims of theft and pickpocketing. Make sure to keep your eyes and hands on your belongings at all times. 
As an added safety measure, I recommend splitting up your money in different pockets and zippers. This wasn't my personal experience, but I have had some friends who were scammed at nightclubs in Istanbul. They apparently had a local Turkish person pretend to be their friend, take them out to see some nightclubs, and then were working in hoots with the nightclubs to order bottles of alcohol that they didn't want and try to charge hundreds and hundreds of dollars for this that they didn't ask for. So whenever it comes to going out at night, going and partying, drinking, anything like that, be extra observant and I highly do not recommend doing this alone. And as for the solo female experience, Turkey is a safe place to visit alone as a woman. Just keep in mind my two golden rules. Don't explore after the sun goes down and avoid intoxication. Accommodation. Turkey has an array of accommodation options. You'll be able to find hostels, hotels, and Airbnbs to fit anyone's budget. In large cities, accommodation options will be at their most expensive, while smaller towns and cities will offer better rates. For example, the average price for a budget hotel in Turkey can cost between $20 and $40 per night. For a mid-range hotel, you can expect to pay $55 US dollars each night for your visit, while a luxury hotel can cost anywhere from $200 to $340 US dollars per night. If you're a backpacker, I always recommend staying in a hostel. The average price of a hostel in some of Turkey's largest cities costs about $20 USD. Of course, don't book anything without reading some of the reviews. You can check out TripAdvisor for this and book the accommodation portion of your trip on sites like Booking.com, Hostelworld, Hotels.com, and Expedia. So now that you've got the basics down, here are a few experiences that you can't miss. I've curated some of the best information about this country from not only my own personal experiences, but also from those of locals and other travel experts to bring you the experiences that, in my opinion, you won't want to miss. Now, if you're from here or you've been here and you feel like there's something that I've missed or something that I've overhyped, please feel free to share in the comments. I want everyone in the Limitless Army to learn from each other's experiences, so I look forward to reading what you have to say in the comments. But for now, let's get started with exploring Cappadocia. One of the most highly rated things to do in Turkey is to visit the city of Cappadocia. Located in central Turkey, it's here that you'll find honeycomb rock formations created by erosion that doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. Underneath all the geological structures, there are caves and settlements built around 4 AD that you can explore. There are several unforgettable ways to see Cappadocia besides exploring by foot. Each morning there are hot air balloon rides over the area where you can get a once in a lifetime view of the natural architecture. If you're afraid of heights, you can also explore Cappadocia on horseback. This was such a beautiful experience and it was the highlight of my trip. There are a variety of tour services that can lead you throughout the valleys and past caves and underground cities. These tours are relatively inexpensive for such a unique way to see the country's most sought after destination. Next, take a dip in the mineral baths at Pamukkale. Just above the rural town of Pamukkale, you'll find terraced mineral pools that happen to be one of the most photographed spots in the country. The water contains a high amount of limestone that creates calcium deposits that hang over the edges of the terraced pools, making them look almost like icicles. The water is actually pretty warm, which means you can take a relaxing dip in the water like a spa all day long. If you're wanting to capture some beautiful photos of your trip, you should visit just after golden hour for the most dramatic photos. Last but not least, sail in a Turkish goulet along the turquoise coast. I had my very first sailing experience off the coast of Turkey and I can't think of a better place to do it. I recommend starting your trip on the coast near the city of Fethiye, which happens to be famous for some of the most beautiful paragliding in the world, so there is a bonus adventure for you. For a truly awesome experience, I recommend chartering a boat for a few days. Keep in mind that the price of the boat can vary greatly depending on the time of year you visit, so make sure to do your research. In one of my YouTube videos, I share everything about this experience, so make sure to give that a watch so that you can know everything about what to expect. It is official. You now have everything that you need to experience Turkey for yourself. 
If you would like more weekly content as well as a PDF printout with all of this information for your travels in Turkey, which you can download when you sign up for my newsletter in the description or go to lexilimitless.com slash newsletter. Also, if you are a local from here, leave a comment letting me know if I missed anything or if there's anything that you would want the Limitless Army to know about your home country. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, let's push our limits.